obelisks are these teepee-like structures that you would put out into the garden and grow different types of climbing plants up. So things like sweet peas and garden peas, beans, and even the mashua that I showed you in a recent video. Now, I have seen these available for sale before and they're not cheap. So knowing how to make these, especially out of a material that you can grow yourself, willow, can really save you money and make this a much more sustainable feature to add to your garden. Now, willow is a type of tree and I have some willow that I've started as just these whips and it roots really easily. And the plan is to have some growing here at the house. The willow for these came locally and my friend John Dog Callister showed me how to make these and I'm passing on the skills today. And it's a pretty easy project that will take you about an hour more or less to make the first time. And then after that, it'll probably take you a lot less time. And once you know the basic weaving structure for these bands here, you can then go on to use them again to make things like the willow hurdle that I have in the allotment, also willow baskets. And if you recall, I do have a willow basket weaving series here on Lovely Greens, and that is with my friend John Dog Callister, something to maybe watch after you finish this video. Now, I'm going to go through it step by step, how to make these, and we're going to begin with looking at some of the materials. Step in making the obelisk is choosing the thickest, the longest, and the straightest willow from your bundle. Now, most of these are, I would say, about six to seven foot tall, and all of them are first year willow, I'm pretty sure, except for this one. So you can see this one, it has branches coming out and you can also see that it's getting a little bit of a kink at the top as well so although this is really thick and straight i'm not sure that this is going to be the best willow for my uprights because that's what these are going to be you want these really thick ones for your strong structures to make your tp sides because they're going to give it the most stability and you use the thinner ones to weave the bands around i'm going to set that one aside i think and this is a good bundle. Now for a garden trug of this size, you'll probably need around 11, 10 or 11 uprights. For mine here, there are only nine and I chose only nine because I wanted more space for the plants to grow through, but I don't really think that that matters actually. This one has 11. And so I think 11 is probably going to be better. But the way that you know how many you need for your container is that you put them in your container and you would measure about four to five inches apart, just guesstimate, and then you'll know how many you need. I've just put in the last vertical rod for our garden obelisk and lo and behold, it's 11 for this really standard sized garden trug. And the next step is dependent on whether or not you like the look of these end pieces here or not. Now you can see that some of them are shorter than others. And when you're finished making an obelisk, you can either trim all of those off, or if you like the look of them, you can do a little step here to make sure that they're all the same height. So you'll have to take all of your willow out first and line up the tops so we'll just do that right now and having it this way will ensure that you have a really nice look to your obelisk at the end and, and what you do is you just take all the tips and make sure that they are at the same height then i'm just going to follow down and using my secateurs just going to catch the little bits under here. 
I'm just going to trim the ends. And now what I have after doing that trim are 11 vertical rods that are all the same height. Very pleasing. So I'm gonna put them back in the bucket again and we're going to start weaving them together. Once you have the willow back in the bucket, you're gonna to have to find the smallest, thinnest piece of willow in your bundle. And you want it to be really bendy, really pliable, because this is going to be the tie for the top. And if you want to make it even bendier, you could put some spite into this by gently working the willow with your hands, just slightly bending it and helping to break down the fibers inside. So just doing this, just kind of bending it in your hands and moving it along. And before you know it, you have got a really pliable piece of natural string. Now, if you don't want to use this, if this is becoming too much of an issue as you're trying to do this next step, just use some ordinary string or a zip tie or something like that. Anything to hold the tops together really firmly. And the tie, so if you're using the willow tie, once it dries out, it will be really strong and it will last just as long as the willow garden obelisk or anything willow in the garden, which can be several years, many years actually, and just tie off the tops however you can. And I'm just wrapping this top piece with the tiniest piece of willow that I have and I'm just wrapping it around. I've got the thickest end held down here at the bottom and I'm just wrapping this thinner top piece around and around and around and then when I'm down to just a little bit, so this much, I'm just gonna tuck it in underneath. This is where the bucket really does come into play though, because this is a winter gardening project. And if it's snowing or wet or stormy, you can work inside in a garage or a shed or a barn. The first weaving step is going to be weaving a band here at the bottom, so just above the rim here. And we're gonna use a technique called the three rod whale. And it begins with three weavers. And you begin by tucking them just at the same level as the bucket behind three of the verticals. So there's one, there's two, and there's a third one. The basic technique with a three rod whale is that you wanna go across two of these verticals and then behind the third one. And you always work from the back. So you go across two and behind one. And it can be a little bit tricky, especially to start. But as soon as you have that first row around, it gets a lot easier. It really starts holding in place. So we've got one going across these two, and we're going to just continue this idea. So across two and behind one. This last one that's dangling across two and behind one. This is the only weaving technique that you need to know for this project across two, behind one. I'm going to continue this all the way around and then I'm going to show you how to put new pieces of willow on. As you can tell from this bundle of willow, you're going to be replacing these rods pretty often. So I'll show you again. If we're down to just the tips here. So we replace from the back and you slide the rod on top of it and behind one of these verticals, this one here, twist it around on top, keep the other ones flat, then across two and behind one. And if you can keep all the ends tucked in as you work, then you'll only ever see three main stems come out. If you have lots of little pieces sticking out, it can get really confusing. So try to keep them well tucked in as you work. So let me twist this around. There are two little spindly weavers sticking out here. So I'm gonna replace the next one in the back. 
So sliding this right on top of it, all the way back to where I can get some leverage on this vertical one, then twist it over on top, across two, and behind one. And when you're working this across two and behind one, you can get it mixed up, just rework it and know that one of these canes goes behind just one of these verticals as you work around. If you have two of these weavers that want to go behind the same one, you've messed up somehow. So just backtrack and see where you went wrong. just finishing up this bottommost row and so I'm just doing the last little bits of weaving in here it's about four inches tall and I'm also using my hands to just compact the weave as I go along I'm not going to add any more weavers but the way that you finish this off is you literally just tuck in the last piece go back back behind the last one and if it won't fit behind the last one, you can use some secateurs. Like with this one, it just doesn't want to go back behind. So just snip behind this last one that it fits behind. And that's pretty much it. You don't have to do anything fancy, really. And then if you've got something that's sticking up, just kind of work it down into the weave and pull it through. That's the first band finished and I've just tucked any little twigs that are sticking out back inside the weave. No exact science there, just wherever they'll fit securely. Now, the next step is doing the exact same process so that three rod whale at least two more times, two to three times more up the structure. And that will give it really firm, secure footing for any kind of plants growing up it and make sure that it stands up in weather as well. Now, if you want to, you can just free weave around, just do the exact same thing up here. But as you can see, these vertical rods are pretty wiggly and they'll also squish down and bow out like that as you're working. So if you want to avoid a much larger middle around your obelisk, you're going to have to create a bit of a support or a, a template in the center. And that involves creating a, just a circle with some willow and make it a little bit smaller than the diameter of the bucket that you're using. So let's see, maybe a little bit smaller than that. And we're going to secure this to the inside part of the obelisk. And doing this will give it some support while we're working so that it doesn't bow out. I've gone ahead and tied the round template to every single one of the verticals and it's giving this structure a lot of support. And now I'm going to create the second band just below it. And again, this is the three rod whale starting with three rods. And it's a bit trickier getting it started here. There's no support below it, like the rim down here. So just try to remember the over two behind one. And once you get that first circle sorted, it becomes easier. So working from the back, this last one across two and behind one. Then the next one here, across two and behind one. Tuck it back in if it falls out. Slide it down and it should hold. 
and you can adjust this afterwards. And then this third one across two and behind one. And then just get it all adjusted and level and where you want it and then continue weaving. And this round template here is holding the structure together. And I have tried making one of these without that or having the template slip over the top. And it really isn't very easy. This entire thing bows out. So we've come back to where we started. There's, there's that one. I've got to add a new weaver in for this guy. Let's choose this one here, which is a bit wonky, but we'll work with it. So this one needs to go back here. So across two and behind one. And before you know it, your second band will be complete. I've gotten to the point now where I've got the last pieces of my weavers still sticking out and I've been saying just weave them in and it really is just a matter of taking a piece or even this one down here that's sticking out finding a little slot and just pulling it through just wherever makes sense and wherever it's going to hold there's no specific placement of these you just tuck them in where you think they'll go and if they've got some twigs here on the end you just snip it off and then you can easily fit it down to make a nice solid band. We have two bands completed. I'm just going to do a third one. The two that are finished over here have four bands. You can make as many bands as you would like or as few just so long as it holds together. You could even use this technique to not create a band but a spiral all the way around if you'd like that as well. And I'm not going to bore you with the technique. It's the exact same as creating these other two bands but I'm just going to quickly finish this one at the top. I'm really pleased with that. Feels really sturdy. Three bands. There's enough of the weavers left to do a fourth one if you really wanted to, but I think three is going to be fine for this one. And so now I just need to remove the template. So I'm just going to nip the string and you can already feel the willow bouncing back against that force of it being held in place. And then after this, let's lift it out of the bucket and have a look at it. You'll see how sturdy it is, hopefully. Put this aside. That's fantastic. So because it was in the bucket, the legs might be a little bit pulled in. You can just pull those out and oh, because it's green, it's still very bendy, so you can still mold and adjust this as you'd like. As soon as it starts drying and turning brown, it's going to be rigid and you won't be able to do much with it at that point. But it's standing on its own right now. And if I wanted to, I could put this out in the garden right now, but there is a chance, a very high chance, that the willow will take root and it will start to grow. So at this point, you can either remove the bark off the bottom bits of willow here and then put it into the ground and just firm each one of the legs down into the soil. Or you can put this in a garage 
or a shed or someplace dry and let it dry out and then start using it in spring. I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial on how to make willow garden obelisks. I've literally just learned how to make these, although I do have some prior weaving experience. It is pretty easy. And this is a great afternoon project. And as you can see, I've got three now for the garden and I have the experience to make a lot more. And you can too, especially if you grow or can source willow someplace locally. And as I said before, if you are interested in learning a little bit more about weaving, I do have a basket weaving workshop and also videos here on the YouTube channel and you can have a watch of those or join the local workshops here on the Isle of Man. And those are in the winter. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week here on Lovely Greens. Bye for now.